Thank you. Um, welcome. Uh, so I'm here to, guys, um, to talk a bit about uh, Joomla 4. Um, so um, yeah, so me, um, I started learning what PHP was back in 2010. Um, got involved in Joomla in 2012. Uh, I was release lead between Joomla 3.4, 3.6, and I've now stepped away from all those duties to take over uh, Joomla 4, um, which is the next major version. Um, and so my job today here is to make sure that you guys don't shout at me. Um, my day job, as you kind of referred to, I do not build Joomla sites. I am a Python developer for a facial recognition startup. So um, clearly, I have a lot of experience to help you build your websites. Uh, um, as you can see, um, most people's reaction when they hear Joomla 4 is thinking about the pain of upgrades. Uh, this was my, our board's reaction, for example. Um, except for one person, Michael, who just still wants to punch me. But what can you do? So this is our third attempt at doing Joomla 4. The first one was Icarus. We created an empty repo structure, and we basically asked for the community to contribute what we were going to do. And um, the reaction was um, slightly it was weird, because basically, some people wanted to talk about fundamental architecture problems. Some people wanted to um, tweak the existing thing. And there was no kind of, it quickly went into the organized chaos. Um, and we gave up and came back to it. Attempt two was uh, what's now Joomla X, um, which was basically a fundamental rewrite of the stack, um, taking advantage of best practices and everything. But that's taking a long time to build. and so. In the meantime, we're sitting here working on Joomla 4, which is the next generation of Joomla, trying to um, fix problems that we've got in the system and incrementally improve um, the current 3 series. So when you're building a next major version, you've got to think about what you're looking to do. What, and so the first question, I guess, the obvious question is, is what should a CMS do? So I kind of Googled around a bit. And these two um, I found quite interesting definitions. Because um, so the first one says it is a uh, computer program that allows publishing, editing, modifying content, as well as maintenance from a single interface, which at first thought probably does sum up Joomla. But does it actually reflect modern web these days? People are building apps. People are building. Uh, websites, people are doing all kinds of things with APIs. Is there really a single true interface these days? Probably not. Um, and the other one that I found, um, a, a software that provides website authoring, collaboration, and administration tools designed to allow users with little knowledge of web programming to create and manage content with ease. But uh, does that really apply to, for example, Drupal? Would you say that Drupal is something you can install and little management and your gut? So I mean, content management system is a very loose term. And it can mean so many different things. And kind of what you're actually building is something for everyone, despite the fact that everyone wants different things, which is really an impossible challenge. So maybe we should. Um, Maybe CMS is a too high level term. Maybe we need to think about what Joomla does well. So I Googled WordPress versus Joomla versus Drupal, which is, if you think about it, something that your client might do. If you have a client and your client is like looking at a new project and he says, you know, uh, and you recommend him a tool, the first thing he's going to do is look up what the big two, three players in the market are and try and work out why you've told him to use Joomla. And does that make sense with his business goals? Just to make sure that you know, things are all on the same page. And it, this also was quite interesting, because, for example, I never knew that uh, Joomla was great for social networking websites. But if you read the first half a dozen entries on Google, they'll all tell you that. Um, so, But there were some common pain points already began to identify themselves. For example. Um, several websites all talked about WordPress's famous five-minute install. And people go, oh, but Joomla's is a bit clunky, and Drupal's is a bit clunkier still. 
And so you already start to feel that people, how strongly people value user experience and the user interface in the system. So I guess the question is, is what is Joomla's target market? You know, what, what user group are we trying to appeal to? Are we trying to appeal to developers? Are we trying to appeal to um, site builders? Are we trying to, to promote ourselves to these kind of medium range products? And uh, kind of, you know, have small kind of companies with a team of people. And I think uh, up until very recently, Jim has been very sketchy about that. We always have tried to market ourselves as this middle solution for everyone. And it, we're starting to realize that that's just not working. And so um, we basically, um, there's been a huge amount of work done in this recently by the marketing team uh, with the idea that we're building a CMS that's going to appeal to people building websites. So that's not necessarily the person who comes on and manages the content every day. It's the per we're appealing to site integrators, people who are going to go and set up a website for a client that they can use day in, day out, and feel comfortable. And alongside that, so that's what we call system integrators here. Um, obviously, um, we're also appealing to extension developers and template developers, but these kind of fall out because if you have strong demand for your product, because these people are building a website. Now, that, of course, we still need to have a system that works, but if you think about the kind of code structure you get in WordPress or whatever, you know, people will go where the money is. People, and people will deal with terrible code structures if their money is right. So yeah, so my takeout from this was um, people use Joomla because it has this really cool concept of extensions that people can reuse everywhere. And it's easy to integrate those extensions together. I mean, we heard earlier in the keynote just now how um, part of the problem in WordPress is, is that yes, you can download extensions, but making extensions work together can often turn into a nightmare really fast. For example, he was talking about his, um, uh, what was that, the, um, the management software integrating with all the other parts, the e-commerce and all the rest of it. And we're generally used by site builders when a highly bespoke project is um, too expensive, but it's more than just a blog. I mean, we're not trying to appeal to the Squarespace, the Wix market space, because we want people to install extensions. Juma's interface is designed for people to install extensions in. If you're not installing any extensions, the interface is less clear. It's, you're not using half of Joomla. So using that, we can build some target points for what we are needing to do with Joomla. So to, um, uh, to try and make the code easier for um, people who are developing code, we want to eliminate deprecated code, make sure there is one clearly documented way of doing things. And um, to appeal to site builders, we need to in, uh, clean up the admin interface. We want to improve SEO because the world's moved on in the last five years since the last June, the major version. And we really need to, um, some of the SEO stuff we can do obviously in a backwards compatible way, but some of it will probably um, cause um, markup issues and stuff when, if templates only override some parts of views and stuff. Um, upgrade from Bootstrap 2 to 4, make sure that we're using latest and greatest with all the uh, accessibility improvements and everything that comes with. Um, also, we want to start to um, improve our technical um, code so that we can have better tested code, which should mean in, there are less bugs in the future, or at least as uh, jQuery always used to put it, uh, the new bugs are new and innovative every time. We don't get the same bugs again and again and again. And then we want to look forward a bit. We want to um, get, um, get our um, ecosystem ready for web services. People build apps. People do all kinds of things. So we need web services. So we have these integration points for applications to work with each other and for um, people building apps on phones and stuff. And of course, while we're doing this, we'll always do the usual thing, improving uh, performance issues and whatever have you that maybe we couldn't do because of backwards compatibility issues or whatever have you. So that was the focus when we started working on this, these areas. So 
I'm going to start working through all the problems and what we are doing to solve these. So problem one, WordPress has this famous five minute install that anybody can tell you about and people can largely do with their eyes closed. And it's considered simpler and more intuitive than ours. Solution, we've rebuilt the installer. It's now a um, single page JavaScript app with an amazing new design. Um, and we've cut out steps. So stuff that, like site description stuff that you kind of what normally, that doesn't need to be part of the install, we've cut. That can still be done in global configuration once you've installed, but there's no need to litter the installer page with extra things for users to see and try and make their minds up about what they're setting up and all the rest of it. Leave it till after the install. We don't need to show people's, it, people whether they've got issues with their PHP configuration if they don't have any. You know, interrupt them if they do, the install. Don't allow them to get to the first install page. Just fail. And we'll leave sample data till after the installation's finished because it's not part of the installation. It's sample data. It's allowing people to set up and go. You know, we want to make the install a quick, rapid process that people can do fast. Um, and do I have an example? Yeah. So this is um, the this is how it looks. Um, you can see this is step one of three, but it's all a single page thing. Um, you click to reveal the next step, basically. Um, and there's three steps: um, site name and language is step one. Step two is um, your admin user information, so username, password, and step three is your database information and your install. And it's super fast. And if we have time at the end, I will come back and do a demo. Problem two. We all know that Joomla's media manager sucks. Um, everybody knows it. How many people here have downloaded JCE because not even just for the editor, but just because they want a better media manager? Yeah, we know it. So, solution, media manager rewrite. We've put this into a native JavaScript interface. This means that there is no clunky iframe, so every time you click the page reloads, uh, you were using Vue.js for that. There is um, back-end interactions with the REST API. There's this fluid interface, and as you can see, it looks visually much better too. Um, you can now do basic image manipulation in the interface. Um, I don't believe we've merged the plugins yet to store data in the cloud, but there was a, a large amount of work done on our GSOC projects this year on that. Um, and um, again, this is now something that's clean and much easier to use, and I really think it's a massive improvement on what we have now. Problem. There are five different event-based systems in our CMS. No one really knows why. This makes things really annoying when you're trying to build plugins. So solution, we're unifying them. We have rebuilt the plugin system. We've looked around, and um, we have um, implemented what is effectively going to become a PHP fig standard scene um, for dealing with this kind of thing. Um, so there is now a um, much better way of updating plugins because they're now passing around objects rather than weird um, things. Uh, just properties hit randomly, which when you want to remove properties or add properties starts to become terribly clunky. Um, compatibility layer for old plugins. So this will be absolutely fine with your existing plugins, but there is, there is a well-defined um, upgrade path that we will document clearly for people if when they are ready to move to the newer version. And it's not actually a massive change, to be honest. It's pretty much changing like four lines of code in your existing system. Um, and basically, all plugins now run through one single dispatcher, rather than five, with the exception being authentication plugins still, because um, obviously, in plugins, you have access checks. But access checks on the authentication plugin is a kind of stupid idea. We are trying to reduce bugs and improve security as well. So we are now going to start requiring PHP 7. 
because there is uh, a huge amount of uh, functionality in PHP 7 we want to use. It will also be, in the not so distant future, the uh, PHP 5 will become unsupported by the PHP team. We have to support Joomla for the next, probably, each Joomla version seems to last approximately five years. So we need to support a Joomla version for five years. We're planning ahead. There is no point in trying to support a PHP version that will be around for a few months of Joomla 4's lifetime and then becomes um, unsupported for security updates. And we get a bunch of extra functionality as a result. We're starting to add type hints and return type hints into our code base. This means that if someone screws up and um, starts to inject dodgy data all over the place because of a bug in code or whatever, it will become really, really obvious because there are type hints now to protect against this kind of thing. Um, we are continuing to work on increasing the amount of unit tests in our code base. Um, part of the work we've done for that is to move everything, all apart, this is, comes back to this idea of moving our packages into the framework. The framework has um, significant improved uh, quality control checks um, just by definition of what it is because they're standalone packages, they don't depend on things. We don't have to worry about um, code being all over the place. We know where there's a single place, there's a single set of tests we can run. And also, on the rest of the code base, we then have better ways to mock us things and start to improve tests. If you want to help with this, Robert Deutz is sitting there. He is in charge of the testing team. Problem. Government policy is increasingly requiring accessible websites. In public sector websites in over here, in Australia, in the Netherlands, and for all websites in Israel. You need to have uh, AA accessible sites. So our aim, and what we will do, is have a Joomla install that out the box is AA compliant. This is our backend interface. Um, it is still a work in progress, but we're getting there. Um, this is something that we can enforce throughout Joomla, and we will. Uh, it is also um, something that um, will be um, continually worked on. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so um, we're going to start making all our extensions AA compliant. Um, and um, obviously, we're going to be working with JED to work out how we can improve uh, the quality of accessibility of extensions in the JED as well. Armin is there, he is in charge of our accessibility team. Wave. Higher, there you go. If you want to help with making Joomla accessible, then please go find him. So what does uh, AA accessibility mean? It means a whole bunch of things. There's a massive spec, but just to single out a few things, it means making sure there are good color, color try that one again, color contrast for the visually impaired. Um, the ability to navigate through the interface with tabs, ensuring all inputs have labels or real labels for screen readers, and documenting uh, a standard that we're going to work to um, to make sure that people try and solve these problems in a consistent way. So, next interesting question. Who has tried to make things work in 12 column grids and found it to be a nightmare? Yeah. So, as was alluded to earlier, there is a new kid on the town, CSS grid. Native CSS code, no need for containers. Um, pretty well supported in all browsers now. And as you can see, there is now 75% support across kind of global usage. Um, and the only browser that doesn't really support it that really matters is IE. Um, because IE basically, I, this, isn't, this used to be an IE standard. And basically, they never upgraded to the latest version. They got eventually passed as the specification. CSS Grid is super cool because it allows you to have so much flexibility. Um, so how does it look like? Um, I hope you guys can see this towards the back. But basically, you define um, template areas, and these map to classes. And then you literally build up a grid of how this should look. But the really awesome thing with this is um, because you can, um, it, it, you, because this is native CSS, you actually can do um, start to reorder your grid on different devices. So for example, if you, um, someone turns their phone around, 
you can break, you can add in two different grids depending on whether you're in portrait or landscape mode. So you can literally start to um, reorientate your um, things around on different objects. Uh, so for example, here you can see in portrait and landscape, they've rebuilt their grid into a completely different structure. And uh, there is one trap, which is you have to be careful how this works from accessibility, because uh, I will click this. Uh, when you start to tab through the interface, uh, things start to appear in different orders. But I'm going to give a small example of how this looks. So. This is um, a really basic gym in the front end where I, I've added a bunch of articles into a list. Nothing too special. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start just adding CSS classes to start to modify the structure. And you'll see how um, flexible this means. So for example, if I remove everything, so here is just a list of items, right? This is what you get on a category blog out of the box with a single column. If I now say I want to add a class uh, columns two, which I predefined will give me two columns of data with um, heights. You can see uh, there is two equi height columns. But you know what? It feels a bit inflexible. Like this column height seems a bit weird. So how about we kind of add a different class that um, gives us three columns because we want to squash up this a bit and um, make them all just masonry so they fit to the height of each other. So we'll remove the columns and add a masonry class. And now I can't really tell them apart, so I'll add like some boxes. You can see that you can just completely change the entire structure and flow of your page just by modifying CSS classes, which is supremely powerful. There is so much potential with this to do things that we could never do before. Imagine moving modules around on your page, depending on whether you're on a mobile or not, for example. So that's the power of grid. OK, so grid solves one of the problems, which is Grid, uh, kind of this kind of grid structure we've had for ages. The other kind of problem we have is that markup itself is quite annoying and fiddly, and you've got to learn what all the correct classes and IDs are, often in a nested structure. That's quite annoying. So one of the things that's come up recently is this standard called web components. And so if I want to build an alert, why can't I just build myself a Joomla alert tag that under the hood is going to render the correct markup for me? And so this is something that we have started working on. And opinions differ wildly as to whether it's the, a good thing or a bad thing. But um, it's a really flexible system. So when you build up these elements, I'll go back to this. Basically, what you do under the hood, actually, let's move on. Um, there. Go back. That's better. Um, you get modularity in your CSS and JavaScript. You, know ex you don't have interdependencies. Everything is encapsulated into one single element. It gives you flexibility with, uh, over what the user can and can't override, which means that you can um, ensure that things meet the same styles. You have consistent styling across your website for the same elements. And finally, um, it gives you great extensibility because you can start to build up um, sets of data which are completely kind of unique and custom in your own way. And um, whilst internally some DOM stuff can look quite hard, you define templates and scripts and what slots for what can be written and stuff. It doesn't matter for most people, because most people are just going to use the elements. And they are supremely easy to document and use. You can see here, this, this is for a set of tabs. And you can see it has, it's really easy, because you can say, you don't need to build like a whole series of nested divs and tabs and stuff. All you have to do is implement a parent tabs, each individual tab. Here is the styling available. 
here is the, event, the JavaScript event string. And so you're only exposing a limited subset, and the user doesn't have to learn about half the implementation that they currently have to with Bootstrap and stuff, where you have to make sure you've got like three or four layers of divs and make sure all of them have the right classes attached and all the rest of it. It's so powerful. So these are things that we're working on at the moment. So I guess hopefully I persuaded you that a lot of these features are worthwhile features to have. So I guess the next question is, is how painful is the migration going to be? So I'll start with extension developers and move on to site builders. So for an extension developer, it should be easy to support Joomla 3.9 and 4 at the same time. We are um, trying to make this upgrade clean and easy. There is a documentation page which we've started and are trying to keep up to date, which is potential back compatibility issues that we think you will come across. Um, and we are also trying to um, backport some of this, limited parts of this into three, so that um, we can try and make the, um, make it easy for you to support clients who still stay on three, because let's be honest, it's gonna take people a year, two years to start to move across. And you'll need to support both versions at the same time. What I would encourage extension developers to do is to start early with this, start looking at this and give feedback. We are here to listen. Once a stable comes out, we're much more tied with what we can do to help than what we are now. So come talk to me, tell me about pain points to experience and things we can do to improve. We are, um, I mean, to give you an idea of kind of issues people experience, mostly it's to do with the use of deprecated code and there's already replacements in the three series for all the stuff we've deprecated, obviously. And I've played around with a couple of people's extensions and templates. For example, um, one of the template clubs, I took a look at their code and upgraded it in 20 minutes to work with Juniper. It should not be a painful experience. And it, their code still works on Joomla 3.3 and higher as well. So try installing your extensions now. See what breaks. See what's easy for you to fix. See if there's any issues that we need to start looking at. For site builders, people building websites, the biggest pain point you're going to get is going to be the migration from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4, honestly. Um, you know, that's, we can't fix things for you with that. You're going to have to look at your template and look at, if your template overrides every single view in the entire system because, and you're using Bootstrap 3 or whatever, you're probably actually okay. If you're using Joomla's Bootstrap 2, then you've got to figure out your path to going to 4, and it depends how much you're overriding. Um, you'll almost certainly need to update your extensions to the latest versions. Nearly every extension uses deprecated code somewhere and they will need to create a Joomla 4 compatible version. We are trying to make the process of checking whether your extension is compatible much easier than we have done in the past. So we have integrated into uh, Joomla 3.9 a uh, new um, view before you hit update, which tells you about all your extensions you've got installed and what versions they're compatible with. So we can say, no, this is not compatible. So you can see in one page what works, what doesn't work. So that's kind of um, the main summary of kind of what we're doing. What we're still working on is a new version of the backend template. There's some really cool designs coming out that we are um, working on. Um, web services, which we're working on. Uh, there's a repo for that. If people want to get involved with that, please contact me. Um, we're looking into service workers. Um, service workers are a really cool concept. They kind of got referred to in the keynote earlier. Um, but they can be an interesting pain as well. Um, we're continuing our work with web components. And we're also working um, on a second round of features for the media manager. Timeline. Timeline. Oh, boy. Um, okay, well, I can do one thing now. 
I am going to push the first table. And it's going to tell me no. Uh, why? <laughs> How about I set it pushed to Joomla? There we go. Alpha 1 is out. As for um, further releases, so for now, this is what we have now is not feature complete in any way. It is not stable. We, for example, we haven't even started working on mobile views. We haven't started working on, um, and as I say, there's a second drop of the admin template that's going to come as well. So what I want this alpha to look like is for people to start, mainly extension developers, to start looking at what we're doing, so people to start testing and start to get a feel of the th direction we're going in and give feedback. As for us, um, how we're going to move forwards, um, it's always hard to say until we start to get everything coming together. Um, we can start thinking about betas, but we're kind of loosely targeting stables sometime next summer. So, you know, give constructive feedback. Um, you know, um, I'm sure you guys must have seen some of the feedback that came on Gutenberg. Some of it's great and some of it ain't. Um, but come to us, talk to us. We're here to listen. Like, we're still completely um, working on things and trying to make things work. And we're always welcome to listen to people's views. And that is me. Thank you. So, questions. Here you go. Uh, is there an, a new? Have you, do you have any details on a new? Is there a new uh, front end template using Bootstrap four in June? Yes, there are new front end and back end templates already, and the new installer template. Um, I can very quickly. This is the back end. Um, I have really stripped down the front end for the purposes of this demo, so uh, I'm just going to reinstall everything. If I reinstall, it's going to be much easier. So this is our installer. Um, step one, step two, step three, done. Uh, let's install sample data. OK, so uh, the site looks a bit like this. The front end template isn't anything too elaborate. We're still trying to keep the idea of having a really simplified front end template. We don't want to kind of build a kind of template club framework style thing. Question at the back there. Is there any plan to have a template without Bootstrap, just plain HTML? Um, Only in front end. At the moment, no. So whilst we're going to be using web components for things, there probably won't actually be um, the Bootstrap. Bootstrap's JavaScript probably won't actually be required in a lot of places. Um, but we still want a consistent styling on things like forms and buttons and all that kind of stuff. Um, the thing that Bootstrap gives us that thing, a lot of, we don't get in a lot of other places is a um, great support community and great documentation. Um, we don't particularly want to go back to the Juma 2.5 days of rolling our own thing everywhere. Um, so for now, the plan is still to use Bootstrap 4 on the front end so that we have this unified view of the world. Everything looks consistent. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.